This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How good it is to see each and every one of you. If you are worshiping with us online on Facebook this morning, we're glad that you've joined us and, and uh, we're excited that you want to worship with us this morning. Before we uh, look at a few announcements this morning uh, and begin our service, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amazing God, we thank you for today and we thank you for the beauty of the day, but more so we thank you for the opportunity to gather as a community of faith in this place and worship you in heart, mind, body, and soul. We pray, Lord, that as we do that, your spirit would descend upon us and begin to work and move in this place and, and reveal a fresh word to us this morning. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, first let me uh, mention this morning, uh, as uh, people uh, on Facebook are, are uh, logging on and, uh, uh, and checking in with us, please do that. Uh, we have a, a few more of these uh, books, uh, The Walk by Adam Hamilton back there that we've been reading during Lent. So as soon as uh, Easter is over, we'll gather uh, probably on a Tuesday um, evening at six to discuss uh, each chapter hear a, hear a little message from adam hamilton and and then uh, have a book discussion on that if you want to join in fine uh, but there are some more books back there um, also uh, let me mention that uh, this is a holy week so thursday will begin our monday thursday service our holy thursday service that will be here at six o'clock we will have holy communion uh, on thursday in, uh, here instead of on uh, Easter morning, which is the first Sunday of, of the month that we would normally have Holy Communion. So we will do that this Thursday here, and we will uh, have that on Facebook Live as well. Uh, and then Friday, we will go out to Gene. Uh, we'll invite Gene to come over here on Thursday, and then we'll go out to Gene on Friday and have a good Friday service out there. So I hope that y'all will come out there and, uh, and be a part of that. And so I want to want to share those. Both of those services are at six o'clock, Thursday and Friday, and then we will gather here on Easter morning, um, and we are planning on opening up the nursery. Uh, I've, I've um, spoken with the leadership, and we're we're going to open up the nursery and the restrooms, uh, but we still will wear masks and we will still social distance. Uh, um, since we'll have different folks coming in for the Easter service, and, and then we'll decide uh, after that how we want to, or when we want to uh, uh, open up fully as we watch the uh, cases, the COVID cases in Young County. There's six right now, and so uh, we're, we're getting better all the time. So that's, uh, that's before us. Uh, so again, let me welcome you to our worship service this morning. You folks on uh, Facebook Live, we're glad that you're here. Please check in with us, hit the like button, tell us that you're watching. Uh, better yet, just share it with someone on your page or, or share it on your page, uh, and then others can uh, jump in and watch us this morning as well. As we do that, um, our uh, opening hymn is on page 277. It is, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus, I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. First let me hear how the children stood round his knee, and I shall only bless. 
Amen. I want to invite you to turn to page 281 for our Palm Sunday prayer. Actually, it's a Passion slash Palm Sunday prayer. Those of you on Facebook uh, or those of you who receive my email and you're watching from home, uh, I attached uh, the, the worship outline uh, to that email so you would have this prayer before you. Otherwise, those uh, watching can just uh, uh, bow as we pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, this morning as uh, we come to our time of prayer, as always, we have our prayer list uh, printed on the uh, prayer board in the Fellowship Hall with uh, in the index cards there for you to add your, your prayer requests. Uh, Facebook folks, if you would just uh, drop me an email at umcpastor at uh, brazosnet.com, I would love to uh, post your prayer request, or if it's a private request, uh, I'll add it to my personal uh, a prayer list, but um, but that went out Thursday uh, in the email as well. The the whole list. Uh, I've got uh, one more. I want to add uh, Thomas Kinsey to our list this morning. I don't think Thomas would mind uh, me mentioning him this morning. Uh, so we want to add uh, Thomas to our list. Uh, we want to be praying for our our church um, revival, for lack of a better term. We call it a walk in the park with Jesus. That's coming up uh, in uh, May. We're having Mark Winter come and uh, spend three days with us, and so uh, we want to pray for that event. Also, our uh, Ministerial Alliance is sponsoring another uh, revival uh, evangelism event for September, and uh, they are having a planning meeting and a fundraising uh, a banquet on April the 13th. And I have tickets for those in the back uh, for $12. If you want to uh, support that or, or learn more about that, uh, please uh, pick up a ticket and, and you can pay me when you see me. Uh, just make your check out to the Ministerial Alliance of Olney and, uh, and that will v event will be at the refuge. And so uh, be praying about that event. Um, Two other uh, prayer requests that uh, I need to mention this morning. I know that you have been praying for uh, my brother-in-law, Stu. Stu is home. He has come home, and uh, he's, uh, he's pretty much everything works. Uh, he, he does walk with a walker, and so I, if my prayer would be that uh, he just continue to move forward and, and gain energy, uh, but uh, he's, doing, he's doing quite well and came home yesterday, so we praise God for that. And Jan's mother, Jean, uh, is on hospice, and so we, we are making plans uh, for the end uh, near for her, and not sure if that will be a week or two weeks, but uh, uh, just be with uh, uh, Jean and, and Bill and uh, Jan and, and Jan's brother, Kurt, uh, as uh, that time approaches uh, Quickly, I'm afraid. Uh, we we still have COVID cases, so we, we want to pray for that. Uh, we have, like I said, we have our list that we're we're going through, and so uh, again, if you have prayer requests, uh, I am a strong believer in the power of prayer, and so get those to me, and and I would love to be praying for for whatever it is that uh, burdens you carry, or or uh, or whatever. Uh, just let me know what those are. So with that, we uh, have some special music for you this morning. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, 
healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out dark demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool waters to the desert's burning sand. From his well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Praise the one true love incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose for many, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory. Praise the one who makes us one. Amen. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we gather in this place. Again, we're, we're thankful for that. But we come for one purpose, and we come for one purpose only, and that is to give you praise and honor and glory uh, in this place. That we might come and bow humbly before you and, and repent of our sins and, and be forgiven and, and feel the, your mercy and your grace just cleanse us from the outside in, from the inside out, through and through, that we might become a holy and reconciled people in your sight, O oh God. that we might be able to receive all the goodness that you have in store for us this morning, that we might receive everything that you have planned for us. And not only that, but that we can come to you with our petitions, with our prayer requests, and lift them up to you. And so, Lord, we do that this morning. We lift up to you these evangelistic events that are coming up. And you know already who needs to be there and who uh, you, your spirit would woo into those places. So we pray, Lord, that you would bless these events and begin to speak uh, in the hearts and minds of those who are planning, those who will attend, uh, those who uh, will work those events that Jesus Christ might be known in all our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. We pray, Lord, for these people on our list who need you in their lives in the way of healing, uh, whatever they're going through, whether they've just had some surgeries or, or they're still fighting uh, the COVID virus or, or whatever it is. We have some on hospice. Uh, Lord, there's just... Uh, a whole lot going on in the lives of the faithful. And we lift them up to you, Lord, and we pray for that healing, that healing that only you can give. And as people of faith and as, and as people who, who put their trust in you, O oh God, we do realize that sometimes that healing uh, is eternal. So help us to cope with, with healing for those who are healed and, and stay with us and the healing that, that takes them home to be with you. We only see what's in our midst. You see tomorrow, next month, and next year. So we trust you, O oh God, as people of faith. 
And then there's others on our list, Lord, and, and in our hearts who just need to know that you walk with them in life. They struggle from this or, or that. Uh, they have burdens. They have stress. And they just need to know that they are not alone, that you are with them. So give them that assurance this morning and strengthen them and guide, guard, and direct them in all their ways. Father, you are our God. We are your people. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the here and now. We are the body of Christ. And so we come together today as such, and we pray together as we always do and as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is found on page 278, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing through pillared courts and temple the lovely anthem rang to Jesus who had blessed them fulfilled to his breast the children sang their praises the simplest and the best from all that they followed mid an exultant crowd the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud the children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ our Redeemer, the singing this morning the only thing we're missing this morning is our palm branches that we normally uh, all have and, and bring those down and, and put them in the uh, in the cross uh, I, I miss that but you know things are just a little strange these days um, we'll get back to some of those good good times like that and we'll keep the good things that we've discovered uh, through this year of COVID so uh, as we uh, begin uh, um, for our time of scripture and sermon, let's uh, bow for the prayer for illumination. Fill us, O oh God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Again, if you are worshiping with us on Facebook, uh, uh, please check in with us. Glad you're, that you're watching this morning. Just to hit the like button, and we'll know that you watched, and we'll count you on our attendance, and it'll just bring a, a smile to our face. 
but it's, it's good to see uh, half of your faces out here this morning, so uh, it's good to be here. We're going to look at Mark chapter 11 this morning. Mark chapter 11, I want to look at uh, verses 1 through 11, the uh, sermon title, The Coming Kingdom, The Coming Kingdom. You know, we always pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know, I, I believe Jesus does that. I believe Jesus ushers that kingdom in uh, with our text uh, this morning. We enter the last week of Jesus' life, earthly life, in bodily form. Think about that for a minute. There is, a, there is great theological depth in that one sentence. We're going to look at uh, the triumphal entry of Jesus. That's what we call uh, this uh, Passion Sunday in the liturgical church, uh, Palm Sunday. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem as the coming kingdom. Our scene takes place on the Mount of Olives. And I've got uh, Richard going to put a, a picture up there for us. It's the same picture I used on our uh, Facebook ad. Uh, I emailed that picture out as well and printed that uh, for some of those who received this uh, through the mail or um, in printed format. Jan and I stood in this place in Jerusalem uh, uh, back in uh, uh, 2014. And looking across the Kidron Valley from the Jerusalem side, uh, you can see thousands upon thousands of uh, white tombs covering the Mount of Olives. Uh, those on Facebook, that is on our Facebook page, so you can, uh, you can see it there as well. Many of these tombs date as far back as 3,000 years. 3,000 years. There are records of at least 150,000 of these white tombs. There's a still a few plots available uh, on the Mount of Olives for uh, $25,000 a plot um, if you would like to be uh, uh, buried up there. The reason they are so expensive is it is believed that this is where Jesus will come or this is where Jesus uh, will stand when he returns to earth uh, in his uh, uh, final victory, ushering the kingdom in in final victory. Also from the top of the Mount of Olives, you can see the old city, uh, Jerusalem, if you look the other direction. And you can see the Eastern Gate, or sometimes known as the Golden Gate or the Beautiful Gate, which has been sealed uh, off and on, but the last time uh, in 1541. This is the gate that Jesus rode through on uh, Palm Sunday, on that first Palm Sunday. And many believe that Jesus will return to this spot and re will, will reopen uh, this east gate, this golden gate. And the dead in these tombs, which are buried with their feet facing the east, uh, will rise up and walk with Jesus through that gate as he reopens the golden gate. Uh, little side note, no extra charge for this, but if you noticed, pretty much all the, all the cemeteries that I've been in, even here in town, they are that way too. The feet, the footstone is facing east. The headstone is facing west. And this is that's for that reason. In pretty much all cemeteries, the ones that I ever I've been in. Um, but before you, we walk down this ancient road from the Mount of Olives down through the Kidron Valley, which is a very steep road. It's paved these days, uh, but it's very steep. But before we do that, uh, I want you to know that this is the place where Jesus stopped his donkey, looked at the tombs, looked at Jerusalem, and Luke 19, verse 41 through 42 says that Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they did not recognize the time of their visitation from God. And Jesus wept. Jesus wept. I'm going to share quite a bit of scripture with you this morning as we flesh out the theological meaning to what Jesus is doing here. So if you are a, a note taker or, or you write in your Bible or mark passages, uh, 
prepare yourself. But for a, for a year now, COVID has uh, put a, kind of put a damper on the way we worship. I've mentioned that uh, before. But nevertheless, I want you to know that the kingdom still comes. The kingdom still comes and is here. It's one of those uh, now and not yet type things, this mystery thing that Jesus uh, presents to us. So let me remind you uh, of Jesus' response to the Pharisees. Uh, as they ask him the question, when is the uh, kingdom of God coming? And in Luke 17, verses 20 through 21, Jesus says this, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Lo, here it is, or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. The kingdom of God is in the midst of you. So with that in mind, and at the forefront, let's take a look at our text this morning. And even though our pre-reading, I, I had you uh, begin reading in verse 46 of the 10th chapter, uh, I'll only read 1 through 11 of the 11th chapter. Hear the word of the Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, Near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside the street as they were untying it some of the bystanders said to them what are you doing untying the colt they told them what jesus had said and they allowed them to take it when they brought the coat to colt to jesus and threw their coats cloaks on it he sat on it many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think it's important for us to know uh, that the scene uh, that is taking place here begins uh, uh, or, or takes place at the beginning of the most sacred week of the Jewish year. It, it is the uh, week of Passover. Uh, and I've mentioned uh, several times uh, during this Lenten season that uh, according to William Barclay, the Scottish theologian, uh, it was required of all the, the Jewish males of, of age within a 20-mile radius to, to go and be a part of the, the Passover. But also there were pilgrimages from all over the world, people trying to uh, get there for Passover. Um, and we'll learn about one of those, Simon of Cyrene, uh, on uh, Friday out at Jean, but uh, and so Barclay estimates that there could be as many as two and a half million people gathered in Jerusalem uh, during this celebration. That's a lot of people. Uh, Jerusalem uh, during this time was not all that that big. Uh, still not if you go to Old Town Jerusalem. In his uh, book, uh, the last week, Marcus Borg and Dominic Crossan writes that because of this tremendous crowd uh, in Jerusalem during Passover, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, uh, chose that time to make his grand procession uh, into Jerusalem. He comes in uh, from the, the west. He comes in from uh, Caesarea by the sea uh, with his entourage, as you, if you will, uh, uh, Borg says as many as a thousand troops, all in, in uh, uh, military attire and, and weapons and, and the such. It's a, a grand uh, parade, if you will. Uh, but he also uh, uh, talks about 
how King Herod would be coming in from the north as well with his entourage, uh, his royal soldiers, uh, to uh, do crowd control, I, I suppose. Uh, you know that uh, Herod uh, uh, is very forceful. And so uh, if uh, anybody got out of hand, then he would take care of them. Uh, and we know Herod as the one who cut uh, John the Baptist's head off uh, when he thought he was getting out of hand. And so you, ha you have those two forces coming in. Uh, Borg continues to uh, say that according to Roman imperial theology, the emperor was not only the ruler of Rome and all its provinces, but he was considered uh, son of God, Lord, and Savior, the one who, who brought peace to the earth. Well, of course, that peace that Pilate would bring and that peace that Herod would bring uh, would be brought about by force. And anyone who uh, tried to buck the system, uh, they, would, uh, they would see um, what that looked like. That's one of the reasons why they chose to crucify criminals during that time and, and put them on the crosses along the road leading into the major, uh, the major gates of Jerusalem so people could see firsthand what those who tried to buck the system had to uh, come up against. So I want to get you, uh, I want you to get in your mind's eye this morning what's going on uh, here. Knowing all of this... Uh, Knowing all of this, uh, Pilate uh, coming from one direction, uh, Herod coming from another direction, uh, uh, and, and Jesus coming from the east. Jesus comes from the east. He, he chooses this particular time to make his own political and theological statement of who he is and who he represents as he comes to bring in the new kingdom the new coming kingdom. Now, do you find it a little bit odd this morning that as Jesus comes in from the east riding his donkey, that he chose to do that after he walked 90 miles to, uh, to Jerusalem? He walked from Galilee to Bethphage, and then uh, he uh, uh, stopped a half mile from the city and he sent two of his disciples in to walk a half mile into the city to get the donkey, bring the donkey back another half mile so he could get on it and ride the half mile into Jerusalem uh, just for show, just to make his, his statement. You know, Mark is pretty much silent uh, on a lot of things. We just get a little bit from Mark. But, but if we look at Matthew chapter 21, verses 4 and 5, Matthew says that it was to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, which says, Tell the daughter of Zion, which is uh, Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And if you go and, and find the historical text from Zechariah, and we look in Zechariah 14, verse 4, it says, On that day his feet, talking about your king, his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies before Jerusalem on the east. And then we find in 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 33 through 48, that King David sent his own royal animal, a donkey, to carry the new representative to God's reign into Jerusalem, who was King Solomon. And in Exodus chapter 4, verse 20, Moses rides a donkey as he returns to Egypt to lead the people out of bondage and oppression. Again, in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13, we find that it's the custom of spreading garments on the colt and on the road during the coronation service of a new king. In 1 and 2 Maccabees, uh, we find where it is the custom for war heroes when they return from war uh, uh, victorious for them to uh, wave palm branches as a symbol of national triumph and victory. 
In his book, The Way, Adam Hamilton uh, writes, Psalm 118, verses 26 and 27, is a psalm written to welcome kings back to Jerusalem as they return victorious from war and was understood to refer as well to the Messiah who would come and deliver people from bondage and oppression. Do you want to know what those two verses in Psalm 118 say? Look at our verses in Mark chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. Hosanna, which means save us now. Blessed is the one who cam comes in the name of the Lord. So through divine foreknowledge and theological depth, Jesus carefully planned every detail of his coming, the coming kingdom in the midst of God's people. But as Mark tells the story, all this takes place outside of Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives. Those shouting and waving the leafy branches in, in Mark, those are the people who came with Jesus. Those are the ones who followed him there. And, and they don't think of Jesus as the Messiah per se. They have not referred to him as the Son of God or as the King or as the Son of David, but one who comes in the name of the Lord. In verse 9, and the one who will restore the kingdom of David in verse 10. So the crowd around Jesus, the one who is waving the branches and shouting, they see Jesus as a, a military leader. Their hope is that he is a military leader like King David. Uh, and they even ask for blessings for the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, which was a, a kingdom built on bloodshed. And you can read about that in First Chronicles chapter 28. Bloodshed and military might. So with millions and millions of people in Jerusalem for Passover, this is, is basically a pretty small processional, uh, according to Mark, and, and pretty much goes unnoticed uh, by the Roman imperial powers in Mark's gospel. They, they don't see uh, Jesus as a threat at this point. And then in verse 11, our, our final verse, Jesus rides the colt into Jerusalem to make his uh, political and theological statement. He goes into the temple, uh, unlike all the other uh, gospels, he goes into the temple and he just looks around. The scripture says he sees everything as it was already late and then he leaves returning to the Mount of Olives and to, to Bethany. My question is, what does he see? Surely he sees the corruption uh, taking place in the temple. Perhaps he sees the den of robbers, as Matthew 21 tells it. The mention of it being late reminds us of John's gospel, where, where any time it talks about uh, being late or it's, being, or it's night or it's dark, it, it speaks of the corruption and the darkness in that place. So, so the mention of it being late is, in verse 11, it's also a, a, a metaphor for the darkness uh, in that place. And ironically, uh, the only one who could see Jesus for who he was and who he is was blind Bartimaeus from Jericho in the previous section. That's why I had you start reading in chapter 10, verse 46. Blind Bartimaeus is really the only one who, who knows Jesus for who he is, can see Jesus for who he is. The coming kingdom would not be a kingdom of military might, but a kingdom of love and a kingdom of grace. A kingdom where the, the good news is brought to the poor. The captives are free, the blind see, and the oppressed are liberated. Check out uh, Luke chapter 4, Isaiah chapter 61. And this is not only physically, but more importantly, spiritually. As Jan and I stood on the Jerusalem side of the, the Kidron Valley... Our guide, who was a Palestinian, asked us to look back at the Mount of Olives. He said, look back at the Mount of Olives and tell me what you see. 
Well, of course, it was all those tombs, all those white tombs, thousands and thousands of white tombs. And then our guide said, I want to read a scripture to you. And he, he opened it up to Matthew chapter 23, verse 27, and he read these words. Jesus, speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees, said, For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the inside or on the outside look beautiful, but on the inside they are full of the bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. And seeing those sights and hearing Jesus' words, I realized that that is the world in which we live today. And the choices are still the same. Do we see the kingdom of this world as, as, uh, and all of its splendor as the devil described it to Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 4? Or are we like blind Bartimaeus? And we see the coming kingdom of God in the midst of us. In the midst of us. Again, Jesus says, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. Nor will they say, Lo, here it is or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And other versions say the kingdom of God is within you. If we have the eyes to see and the heart to receive, the kingdom of God is in the midst of us even now. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your words today. We thank you uh, for this Palm Sunday and the celebration of it is, but we realize that it, it ends in a different way. But we know, O oh God, that it has to, to go through this process that we might end up at the empty tomb on Easter morning. So help us, Lord, to have hearts and minds like blind Bartimaeus and see the kingdom in our midst. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is All Glory, Laud, and Honor on page 280. It will be on our screen as well. As always, the uh, altar is open uh, for you to come and pray if you want to or, or pray where you are. If you want me to pray with you, just motion to me and I will come. Facebook family, if uh, you need a, a prayer request, uh, just let me know. I would love to pray for you. This is, this is your moment. This is your moment. May we stand and sing. All glory, love, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom lips of children may sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel. Thou Son, who in the 
once again, good to see you here this morning. Facebook family, glad you joined us this morning as well. Would you receive the benediction? As people of God, go forth in peace and know that the kingdom of God is in your midst. If we have the eyes to, to see, the heart to receive, help us to do that, O oh God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.